to reduce its $300 million debt overhang. Coming up in business news, GRA chases tax defaulters. On an international front, Tunisia military takes over management of the country's coronavirus crisis. We're live on 23 Gun on Facebook, DSTV channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. Let's get into it now as a developing story coming in. COP George Dampari has been appointed as a new Inspector General of Police in acting capacity by President Kofado. Hours after 3news.com had broken the news, the presidency issued a statement to confirm that the 51-year-old will replace James Opombueno, who has been directed to proceed on leave pending his retirement in October. So that's the issue that's coming in now, and this is something that has been developing a uh, Porsche over, over the last three hours uh, when we put out the news the first time. This is a man who has been described by security analysts as a man on the boot. He is on the ground. He uh, he has been on the front line. He knows exactly what's going on in the rank and file of the. Ghana Police Service, and I'm going to show you why they say so. Follow me closely, because according to his profile, as we have it, he's been in the Ghana Police Service for over for almost 30 years now, as a matter of fact. Also, uh, beyond that, he's one who can be described as having served in, the, in charge of administration as a Director General of the Ghana Police Service before this appointment. Also, before that, he served as Director General, Operations, Finance, Welfare, ICT, a commandant of the police command and staff college and also the Accra regional police commander and if you listen to the screen analysts talk about him he, when he was sent to this particular command as the welfare officer he transformed the whole system he's a chartered accountant he chartered at age 25 holds a phd in finance he's also been an adjunct lecturer at the ghana institute of management parliament administration that's gimpa and the university of cape coast as well beyond this in fact, you can also ascribe to him a number of things he's done, served as ADC to the vice president of Ghana at a point. He was also head of police and narcotics desk at the Ministry of Interior. He comes in with a rich, rich history and experience in various capacities in the Ghana police service, rose through the ranks. And Portia, you, you know that clearly he uh, can actually be comp compared to the many, many people who have served and delivered uh, beyond expectation in the Ghana Police Service. Porsche. And I've been joined via Zoom by Adam Bona, a security analyst, to engage a bit more on this announcement that's just coming through from the President. Mr. Bona, good evening to you. Thank you for your time uh, this evening. For you, security analyst, this, this is the first time you've had an IGP appointed who was not above the retirement age. But what message that this sent to the rank and file of the police service as we speak well good evening now Fred. It, it, it sends a, a message that actually tells every young police officer if you read the profile of my good friend uh, cop dr dampare you would notice that he started as a constable and rose through the run become uh, COP and eventually getting appointed as the acting inspector, inspector general of police, sorry. And so as far as I'm concerned, some of us have been on the heels of uh, the appointing officer to stop appointing uh, retired and tired officers uh, to be IGP. And so I am happy. Mm. COP Dampara, the I, acting IGP now, I think it's about 51 years old. Uh, it's time to be corrected, but it's about 51 years old. It means that uh, it's good for a lot of his colleagues to aspire to do well. If you do well, hopefully you are likely to uh, get to where he is today and hoping that he'll be 
uh, confirmed. And so I must congratulate him. I must congratulate him, my friend. His appointment is coming at a time, Mr. Bonat, when this police service is experiencing a lot of operational deficiency. The image of the police has been battered. The police public relationship is, is lost as we speak. What, what exactly should, should he be paying attention to in the first few days as he assumes this position? Well, I am praying that the president will, in as a matter of urgency, quickly get him confirmed, get him confirmed as the substantive IGP so that he can, uh, you know, restructure the Ghana Police Service. I'm expecting a serious restructuring of the service. Uh, the other thing I'm expecting him to do is to build bridges. The police service, as it stands today, is in a mess. It's in shambles. Some of us who work closely with them will tell you it is nothing to write home about. There's a reason why when even girls are agitating and picketing, military officers are sent in to go and check girls who are picketing and, and you know, disputing over, you know, some internal school matters. And so I want to see a police service under... Uh, you know, my good friend, uh, Dampari, that is building bridges and uh, bringing on board the rank and file and working with his colleagues. Remember, there are several other COPs, but the president uh, saw him probably be fitting to be the IGP. That is not to say the others are mm. not suitable. And so he would have to bring all of them on board. There are you know, challenges to do with crime fighting. And as the IGP, uh, anyone who understands policing will tell you that as the chief constable or the person, the number one police officer, your work is not to be dealing directly every day with the citizens. Your work is first of all to the officers. When you work seriously, diligently with the officers, uh, the officers in turn work for the people and in return, you okay. take the glory. Let's now turn our attention to Parliament, where the MP for North Ton, Samuel Okutetua Blakwa, has refiled an urgent question demanding that National Security Minister Albert Kandapa respond to the President's controversial travel to France and South Africa. It follows the decision by the Finance Minister Ken Oforiata to decline to provide details of the June trip, stating to Parliament that it is a national security issue. In June, President Tikufado embarked on a post-COVID engagement trip to France, where an Airbus ACJ-30 320 new plane was chartered for $15,000 Sana. The current practice is that the Ministry of Finance releases quarterly funds to the heads of department, in this case, Office of Government Machinery, the Chief of Staff, for all the operational activities of the office to facilitate the safe coordination of the President's travels domestic and foreign, that is, the Office of Government Machinery and the National Security Secretariat work, to achieve, to work together to achieve this. Mr. Speaker, the President's domestic and international travels are matters to do with national security. The National Security Minister is really best placed, Mr. Speaker, to furnish this Honorable House with the details needed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So we're going to stay on this in our subsequent bulletins as and when that answer comes. But away from that, Health Minister Kukwa Jumamenu has revealed Ghana had no plan of procuring vaccines in the heat of the ravaging virus as of November 2020, uh, justifying why he didn't get public procurement authority ratification for the purchase of the Sputnik V. He says procuring the vaccine was solely a ministerial decision. You didn't get the approval of cabinet. Was there an executive, executive approval? The COVID task force, and within that, we have the EOC, which was actually headed. What is EOC? The Emergency Operations Center, which was headed by the minister. That is where we had all the technical people. When we started the management of COVID, our strategy was not to procure from any source 
apart from bilateral, multilateral engagement. When it became evident that we couldn't get the supplies we had ordered from those sources, the committee decided that we can go out to procure from a private source. And that is how come we got ourselves involved in this. You are supposed to prepare a procurement plan somewhere in November and submit him to the Public Procurement Authority. Is that correct? Yes. Was this captured in that procurement plan? No. Can you explain why this decision Honorable Chair, was not part of your communication to PPA? Honorable Chair, at the time we were doing our procurement sorry, uh, plan, we have not had any indication that we were going to finish development of vaccines as early as 2021. So we hadn't planned even to buy vaccines in 2021. That is how come it didn't appear in our procurement plan. You mean as in from private sources? From all sources. Okay. Away from Parliament, a second variant of the deadly Delta strain with similar rapid infection rates has been identified by the West African Centre for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens. The new variant, which is yet to be named, means Ghana must upscale current stringent measures to control the threats of a third wave. According to the director of WACPIP, Professor Gordon Awandari, making rapid antigen tests accessible and affordable to Ghanaians will reduce the current uptake in COVID infection. Many of the rules have been there, but they're not being enforced. People just flout them and there's no consequence. Because as for this um, uh, variant that we're dealing with, in fact, we have two variants that are uh, fueling the wave, the Delta and another one um, that uh, um, has not yet been given a name, but uh, it's part of the, uh, the variants that are rising in the system. These are rising because they are more efficient at uh, transmission. Professor Gordon Awande recommended government's initiative to introduce antigen testing at Ghana's borders to curb the spread of the deadly Delta variant. This follows the announcement by the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Kumabwaje, that government will enforce more stringently measures put in place after a crunch meeting in the Ashanti region due to the high infections there. Meanwhile, WACBIP's data reveals that some 1,000 test samples have undergone genome sequencing since the pandemic began. Ghana's figure is much higher than other African countries. You know, many of our uh, neighboring countries, they, they, they are not doing any sequencing, so they don't have the capacity to do sequencing. Uh, now, what we can improve is the throughput. We can do more sequences. If you are not sampling a lot of the cases to sequence, if a variant is in low frequency, you will not be able to detect it. If it's possible to make the test uh, accessible and free or cheap, cheap enough for people to pay for it, uh, then people will be more willing to comply and, and to take the test. The West African Center for Cell Biology of Infectious Pathogens continues to spearhead research into COVID-19 and is currently hosting a three-day conference under the theme, Building Sustainable Research Capacity in Africa, Lessons from the Pandemic. And the cases keep rising. Ghana Health Service has been updating us on what's happening with already some 43 different variants of COVID-19 recorded in this country. But away from that, the 37 military hospital will have to cough up more than 1 million Ghana cities in a case of medical negligence brought against them in 2015. An Accra High Court, presented by Justice Kweku Aka Buafo, deemed 37 to have acted negligently after a patient, Helena Brema Nyamiche, died after a normal delivery instead of undergoing cesarean section requested. Here's a report by court correspondent Gofer Tanam. In his judgment, presiding judge Justice Kweku Akabuafo held the opinion that the evidence adduced by a witness representing 37 military hospital, one Dr. Jari Jani, one of the main doctors, did not reflect reality. The judge says, in the opinion of the court, what is startling and indeed shocking is the fact that both doctors, Bano and Jari Jani, the two main doctors who knew the disease as a patient, testified that they were not on duty even though 
though Dr. Bano gave the instructions for the deceased to be induced to labor, and Dr. Jani also became aware. According to the plaintiffs who are the father and husband of the deceased, they requested a cesarean section, but the doctors refused and proceeded with normal delivery. The court said counsel for 37 military hospitals failed to address the issue as to why the cesarean section requested was not carried out by the doctors. The court held that no plausible or reasonable explanation was given to the court by the doctors why the request was not conducted. Justice Akabuav also held that there was no doctor or house officer to review the process and so no proper monitoring was done on the deceased when she was in the hospital. The court said, per the testimonies of one COP Nashua Odoi, a staff of the hospital, it became very clear that the disease was not properly monitored until she gave birth and later bled to death. The court awarded damages of 50,000 cities for mental distress, 100,000 cities to the baby deformed in the right arm, 50,000 cities for pain, another 50,000 cities to the husband, and 25,000 cities for the primary care given to the baby. Godfrey Tanam, TV3 News. Accra. In more news tonight, the Minister of Energy has directed the new board of the Ghana Gas Company to rid the sector of debt. Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe is confident, claiming the debt will resolve liquidity challenges and improve the financial viability of the sector. The sector minister of energy, Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe, was disturbed about debt which has bedeviled the energy sector, including the Ghana Gas Company. In 2019, the figure was over $200 million, which has affected operations in the sector. Current figures from the Minister of Energy indicate that the Ghana gas debt has increased by 30% and is now in excess of $300 million as of June 2020. Swearing in the new board, the sector minister, Dr. Matthew Boku Prempe, who expressed frustration at the debt overhang, urged sector players to help deal with the debt. One of my priorities is to rid the sector of avoidable debts, especially ones I call intra-energy sector debts. Uh, DMPC owes me, ECG owes me, VIA owes me, everybody owes everybody. If everybody owes everybody in the sector, then we can as well sit around the table and settle. Board Chairman of Ghana Gas, Kennedy Ohine Japan, MP for Sin Central, pledged commitment to address problems in the sector. We want to say a big thank you to His Excellency the President for having confidence in us that we will be able to discharge our work diligently to help grow Ghana Gas Company. Managers of Ghana Gas are poised to embark on infrastructure drive aimed at enhancing supply of gas in the sector. See, here's a reason why we should all be concerned about the increasing debts of Ghana Gas. Because consumers who visited some LPG gas stations to fill their cylinders had to return home disappointed at the hike in prices of LPG. Uh, some had no option but to buy what they can afford for their immediate use. TV3 reporter Sarah Penkrok-Paku visited some centers as LPG prices hike and has also come through with the support. As of April, liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, sold at 6 cities 30 pesos per kilo. Currently, LPG sells at 7 cities 26 pesos per kilo and four cities 21 pesos per litre. At the World Gas Filling Station at La in Accra, price increases started on Tuesday, July 20. A disappointed Augustina Kwafwa, who is a baker, could not refill her cylinder with the usual amount she carried. I got here and realized the price had changed, so I refilled what I could afford. An attendant who spoke on condition of anonymity revealed that most of his clients had to refill what they can afford. My brother here going away brought 170 for 14.52 because he cannot afford uh, the 210 CD. He decided to take 70, 70 cities. And go. Though the increase per litre and kilo are same, the prices, however, vary at the various gas stations. Now, 
A 2.5 kg of cylinder sells at 18 CDs, 3 kg 22 CDs, 4 kg 30 CDs, 5 kg 36 CDs, 6 kg 45 CDs, 7 kg 51 CDs, while 13 kg cylinder costs 95 CDs. 14.5 kg 105 cities 19 kg 138 cities 25 kg 182 cities 35 kg 254 cities 52 kg 378 cities 63 kg 458 cities and 72 kg now goes for 523 cities but for those considering a switch to the use of charcoal those prices are going up as well Hajia Abiba Salifu a charcoal trader explains the prices are high due to a lack of wood first net on the four this is said in the wire didn't sell I'm going to talk about 500 I'm going to talk about 500 and send off to get on previously it was 40 cities now a sack is 50 cities how much can we sell it? It's really a bother. As prices of cooking fuel go up, consumers should prepare to pay more for food at their favorite food joint. Sarah Apenkropaku, TV3 News, Accra. Well, it will be interesting to know whether food vendors will pass this on to customers as well. <laughs> Certainly they will. <laughs> Not for the Christmas. Uh, they're, they're in business and then also the domestic consumers as well of LPG. Certainly concerned about this. Um, we we'll keep doing some analysis of the trickle down effect of what we are seeing at the pumps. But stay with us. Eton Amse is coming in with the business news. Different era, better result. Time has changed and time has brought Cal Charcoal Toothpaste, healthy gums, anti cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Chocolate toothpaste. Sankofa. Yenchi. Kill chocolate toothpaste. Happy smile. I'm going to interview Zuzum right here in my house. Hey! Look up there. Why are you using inferior pen? It was a mistake. I no check you. Acrobat too. I'm going to knock you out. I know, sir. You deserve quality. Don't make mistakes. Stop! You did the right thing. When you are going to buy a paint, don't look left, don't look right. Go straight and grab the luxury acrylic paint. No be any painting, be paint you. The luxury acrylic paint. Paint me champion. My way insurance. Everything around me come my way insurance. Who's in Patria? Any problem, brain, I can with you now. Russell said, what's up about me come my way with you now? Mr. O, for fun, let me do it. The other kind, dial a star 165 hash. Oh, MTN so. I think select the option two. Never register. I think select the option one. Never confirm. Should the open source have a summary? Obey savings account what you saw. For a moment called Nishib, now policy in the end demo. A chat to a crown. Dial a star 165 hash. Nibio. Never a boost your neighbor could be come home. Dear Matry. So we shall see and I went to me and you are. Make crop will be best fro. No more wow. And now when we boost your one more day. And I was away my way insurance. Send you my way. Cause no way. My way protects you against death and total permanent disability. A product of my life and empty and momo. Can you open the jack? Why do you know? Is that not your wife? Eh? Or call him. Every time your children are falling sick, you don't have money. Stop! 
Everyone. Baby, baby, baby. I don't. What's the TV beer for tonight? You know, I like that sweet scented insecticide spray. Mm, uh, you know, oh. Let me be on the porch. Now, the beer pitting living room, huh? Bad word you hear. Hey, 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 me love you, me baby. Or do you dead? Of course. I take very good care of my wife and children. So I always win. Saga wala. If you want to protect your family against mosquitoes, there's still this sweet scented perfume coil now. I repel mosquitoes. I know I'm always here, baby. And the spray, eh? also sweet scented. It kills all crawling and flying insects. Heaven insecticide. Oh, no, no. Where the badamoshi? Prevention is always better than. Mausanka or heaven insecticide spray. And then the coil. If you say heaven, dear. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the editor. For generations, Ghanaians have had one thing in common, and that's the way we start our day. Wherever your day will take you, start with the energy from Cadbury Ritoko, made from the finest Ghanaian cocoa. This advert is FDA approved. I love football. Football can be a dirty game, on or off the pitch. <laughs> Even when I'm trying to score at a party, stains find a way of tracking me down. But I don't worry at all, because I have Cleesoft. Use new Cleesoft 360 Deep Clean, a unique formula with active ingredients and enzymes that gets rid of all stubborn stains and leaves your clothes smelling wonderful. Cleesoft, my favorite. Cleesoft 360 Deep Clean, clean all. Cute moons had stars. Astro Coco, where is the Milky Way? It's this way. Whoa. And where there's moons and chocolatey stars? That's where the fun starts. <laughs> Mission begin. Yay! Mission accomplished. Mm, yummy. So milky and chocolatey. Introducing Kellogg's Moons and Stars. This effort is FDA approved. The business segment is brought to you. The business segment is brought to you by MTN Roma Insecticide Spray and Coil. West Hills Ridge Property, Eden Heights, Lufat. Let's do business now. My name is Eton Amsim. The Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Reverend Amisha Dai Uswamwa, is urging defaulters to take advantage of the voluntary compliance window slated from September to December and honor their tax obligation or risk facing sanctions. This is because the Ghana Revenue Authority says more than 9 million Ghanaians out of 14 million are currently not paying tax. The Commissioner General was interacting with business owners from the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Accra. The Commissioner General, Reverend Amisha Dai Owusu Ansa, says the measure with the Ghana card and tin revealed the gaps that the authority needs to fill with tax evasion. From the data, you find out that there are a number of people um, that are supposed to be, let's say, in the legal profession. A number of people that are in the medical profession, a number of people are accountants and things like that. Now, these people, we don't find any evidence that they have filed any taxes. Now, in such a situation, you have to engage the person to find out that why is it that previously there's no evidence that you have filed your tax. You'll find out that some of them might not even be paying. And those who are also paying are paying just maybe their, um, what do you call it, yeah. PAYE and doesn't pay any other tax that they're supposed to pay. He stressed that defaulters could access several options under the window to honor their tax obligations. The first vice president of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Victoria Haja, called on the authority to, to streamline a process for tax filing of returns. To improve tax administration, it will require regular engagement with private sector players. The Chamber's assessment of the business 
performance of 3,000 companies in the country shows that the regulatory environment, that is taxes, interest rate, and so on, does not engender business growth and value. The GRE says it has streamlined by transition to the digital platform to allow improved service for clients and businesses. Away from GRE, let's talk to farmers now because the Poultry Farmers Association of Ghana has attributed the 100% increase in the price of feed to the shortage of grains and cereals in the country. The association fears that many more poultry farmers will be affected by the price hikes and may be forced to shut down their businesses due to this. If the maize, wheat bran and soya, which is about 80% of your, your total ingredients uh, needed to produce the bag of feed, is what is at, at risk, then obviously your 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 business is also at risk because um, the prices have gone up, uh, uh, but it's not just gone up, but the uh, products are unavailable. And uh, something that we used to buy for 17 cities, now we are buying for 45 cities. Soya has moved from 120 to 200. President of the Poultry Farmers Association, Greater Accra Branch, Michael Nyako Ampem, lamented inadequate attention for the sector. In my wildest memory, I don't think we've ever purchased a bag of maize for as what we are purchasing now. And uh, if it were even available, then we would, we, would, we would buy it and then manage it. Because what we don't want to happen is we don't want to lose workers. But uh, if we approach the wall, that's what will happen. Meanwhile, General Secretary of the General Agricultural Workers Union, Edward Kariwe, is worried the quantity of maize government says it has produced may not really reflect what is on the ground. Well, because those who generated the figures should be able to account for why there's a huge gap between the figures and what's on the ground. In January, maize production had been more than doubled. That is over 100% increase. But when you check the price on the ground, it was not reflecting that because when there's an increase, in misproduction, mm -hmm. price will fall. And the Ghana Union of Traders Association says it will not prevent foreigners from trading. However, it will fiercely resist any abuse of the rules under the GIPC Act. At a press conference in Accra, president of the association, Dr. Joseph Obeng, said the association will not allow foreigners who deal in goods not permitted under the protocol to trade in Ghana. We members of the Ghanaian trading community have never and will never prevent any African in our midst from trading freely in goods and services that are produced in member states, but will fiercely resist any abuse of the rules of origin by member states. If there should be any amendment of our investment laws regarding foreign retail trade in this country for Ghanaians to endorse, then it should be that for having signed or ratified the ECOWAS protocol and the continental free trade area, any citizen of member states who trades in goods manufactured in their respective countries should be fully exempted from GIPC Act 865. This is what will bring clarity and finality to this long-standing issue. Having come this far, trying to prefer solution to this perennial problem, we wish to categorically and emphatically state that we will not allow any foreigner who deals with impermissible goods under the protocol to trade in Ghana with us unless he or she duly complies with the GIPC law as clearly stipulated in the Act, ACES 5. We shall also not allow any person, persons or institution or institutions that may have a perceived agenda to amend the GIPC Act to please other countries to the disadvantage of the citizens of Ghana. 
Remember, there's more business news on 3news.com. My name is Eton Amsey, and that'll be it for business for tonight. The groom is sick. What? Malaria. Malaria. Lufat. Lufat. In Jaja, we have malaria and covered to them. Lufat. Hey, malaria drop a cup. And now you may kiss the bride. Entrance from a surgical and research center. And are you Lufat? Lufat. A two malaria center. FDA. I should say it again. Can't wait. I just want say it. Have you heard of Eden Heights, a luxury gated residential development located in the heart of Accra West, just behind West Hills Mall? It's Accra's best kept secret, a master planned community of modern style apartments and penthouses bearing the superior seal of grade A finishing. Eden Heights promises residents convenience, security and comfort. For an all inclusive and self contained living experience, Eden Heights is your best choice. You are guaranteed a wide variety of social and recreational conveniences right at your doorstep including open green spaces, soccer pitch, swimming pools, tennis court, fitness center, playgrounds and entertainment facilities. Reserve your luxury apartment on our limited promotional offer with just 25,000 CDs. Call 050-1531444 for more information and to book a viewing. Terms and conditions apply. Eden Heights, welcome home. Hello there. We know what matters today, don't we? Hurry up. Follow safety measures. Drive for hours. Grab a perfect spot. Park smoothly. And then visit another shop. And scroll for the opportunities. Tap to pay. Enjoy that extra reward. Get 10% extra cash back when you pay with Visa. How you pay matters. To me, I don't know, Master. Roma insecticide spray at that Roma. Enter Fred, enter Tia, make it her. No way, you make no and don't talk back or crown fan. I'm also a pussy. Roma insecticide spray and mosquito crown. I'm out there with a sham. Roma, Roma and don't Master. Whatever you're doing it for, we'll help you get it done. Simply. That's Africanacity. That's APSA. I compromise it all. Either my skin is sensitive or my back's against the wall. You can have it all. What? Always brings it all. Okay. Get tall with new Always Twin One. Feather like softness overall, even on the wings, girl. And rapid dry channels. Let me see you make a move. Be it tall, do it all, have it all. Always Twin One Feathery Soft.
Phantom X, new Elise flagship. Be bold, be extraordinary. Sports segment is brought to you by Sasso Insecticide Spray and Coil. Welcome back. Let's get into the world of sports now. The Ghana Football Association has revealed the names and players and also officials and the investigation over the alleged match fixing between Ashanti Gold and Interallies. Now, the Miners won seven goals to zero at the Lincoln Stadium in Obuasi with Interallies scoring two own goals on match week 34. Now, those on goals, what you're seeing on your screen now. The names were published on the GFA website on Wednesday following a review of the match video and information received by the association. According to the GFA, the entire playing body and team officials of Ashanti Gold, SC and Inter-Allies FC, who featured in the match day 34 Ghana Premier League game, played in Obuasi on Saturday, July 17, 2021, have been placed under sporting investigation. They added that general public and all stakeholders are to know that until investigations are over, the Ghana Football Association will not approve the issuance of any international transfer certificate and introductory letter to any embassy for visas for any of the persons under investigation. Well, the former head of communications at the Ghana Football Association, Ibrahim Sani Dara, says the recent issue of alleged match fixing in the Ghana Football Association, that's Premier League, is troubling and doesn't do the league's credibility any good. Speaking on the matter, he pointed to how damaging the implications are and how it threatens the gains made so far. We have to start with some level of education and then we need to start identifying particular patterns of certain match results, the predictions that people make, and all of those, and then we can go deeply. There's this system called the early warning system that FIFA, in conjunction with some statistics companies in the world, have put together. If you are signed on to this early warning system, the early warning system will flag you or will flag to you the results, you know, the similar betting patterns from most of the betting companies across the globe. So you know what is going on and armed with this information, you can call off the match, call all of the actors in the game and start investigation, investigating the issue. I think that it is much more cancerous than we think. I think it's, uh, it's perpetuated for some time now. We've, you know, we hear of media reports, you know, this is the result. We think that this result will happen, then lo and behold, the result happens. So I think that um, we are just scratching the surface of what has happened and we must get serious about it. I think we should look um, in the long term, we should look at club owners, there should be conditions in, um, you know, the kind of people who own clubs in Ghana. Oh, you see the man here. As Real Madrid have availed new defender David Alaba after the defender passed his medicals with the...
Welcome to Dewa NLA 539 Direct Draw Results, coming to you live from the Brennan Hall of the National Lottery Authority. The winning numbers for tonight's draw are... Congratulations to all Dewa NLA 539 Direct winners for tonight. See you same time tomorrow. Dewa NLA 539 Direct are far winning no. It's shock. To our Ghana party, and one they were 539 direct the best little game in Ghana. You hear me say, Ubina with five solid magic numbers. Ah, a free bar, a cosy 39. Wow, director in a fat winning no each show. A brand head, you know, what the two Ghana cities pet and a two you and to one so called star 446 hash across all networks. Uta direct one, Ubedi 20 times Sika Udikayan. Ucha direct tour, Ube the 45 times Sika Udikayan, and a direct train so Ebama the 400 times. I'll fat win no eat chuck. Kwame so and Edino. I'll fat win no eat chuck. Wait me a chat, they were 539 direct. I was selected Lotto Kiosubia. Wagana for Nanina. I'll fat win no eat chuck. Hey! Direct to Nami China for Mammy. Win no eat chuck. They were 539 direct. We It's time to believe in you. We are changing, so should you. drinks a whole new vibe another quality product from casa preco this advertisement has invented and approved by the fda introducing nestle milo all-in-one nutrimix the goodness of malt milk and cocoa in milo and even more milk just add to water and enjoy the perfect cup of winning energy milo. Milo. this advertisement has been vetted and approved by the fda I'm at the station, please. Can you give me the direction? Ask anyone. Okay, madam. Madam Panchi, please. Why you go Panchi, please? A Corso Road. Now, where is number four and Rimde Avenue? Corso! Front right, sharp left. Please, direct me to number four and Rimde Avenue. Corso! One can you go Panchi, please? And give me direction to number four and Rimde Avenue. Corso! Can you direct me to number 24 in the avenue? Keep going with the goodness of the new fan yoga panty peach. So cool, so good. On the foreign front, Tunisia's president has said that the military health department will take over management of the coronavirus crisis. The country's intensive care wards are filling up and doctors are struggling to cope with the surge in cases and deaths. President Saeed's announcement comes amid tensions in government over the handling of the pandemic. On Tuesday, Prime Minister Machichi sacked the health minister Medi, who is an ally of the president. He accused Medi of making criminal decisions that led to chaos and violent scenes at vaccination centers when he opened them up over the Muslim holiday of Eid to those aged 18 and over. But President Said said that problems at the centers were orchestrated by people within the political system. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly with entertainment news.
just a moment. And our power has Oye Jack Macron oh mo eti oji tena kese de ari yo kon tomre kudokni tomato sauce oh mo ye bebre and a beside in for box of salad here eh yo stew ana jollofa na betna mwa da to no we do o to da and a power of fire o me ti ba ni ye dewa je wa na pass my sauce check check for you sir o mo ye tasty and a pa big beans for the breakfast la so wa salad no ma o she ye and a fortuna we can pass for la so wa salad no ma o tasty good and a banana dairy cream for box we so can see oats na cream tea no je wa and a pass the get the Talia Papa B. Mansoon and Sija do re. Now for an apostle, get in the goo. Who an apatalia no are ready for what? On you with you. So I am a pa. No, no, so good. Dem de ruboy ebbie ashishim ajatu. Extraordinary world of endless possibilities on Vodafone. With the best value and amazing data offers and services available in Ghana, your dreams are achievable. Get more for less with Vodafone Data. Vodafone, together we can. And new segment is brought to you by Puma Drinks. In entertainment tonight, some stakeholders have expressed concern about the lack of professionalism in the makeup and beauty industry. Chief Executive Officer of Makeup Ghana, Rebecca Donko, urged practitioners to acquire more knowledge to improve standards. Our focus on lifestyle Wednesday today is on that industry. The traveling kind, it's an old fact. The makeup and beauty industry in Ghana is vibrant. Some women and even men cannot go a day without having to put on makeup. This has attracted many young entrepreneurs to venture into the industry. Practitioners are, however, worried about inadequate regulation. British born Ghanaian and founder of Colorbox Cosmetics, Stephanie Edu, is an advocate for change. You want to make sure that the industry is regulated and standardized so it maintains a high standard. So that anybody that joins the industry is well respected and make sure they shine a positive light on the industry. The industry has a remarkable impact on the Ghanaian economy. The Ghanaian industry alone is worth six billion dollars. Now guys, we want to make sure that we have the structures in place to maximize and make sure that as much money as possible stays within our industry. So it's very profitable. We are creating a lot of jobs. Professionalism is another challenge faced by the practitioners. In a bid to help improve standards, the Chief Executive Officer of Makeup Ghana, Rebecca Donko, has suggested stakeholders work with government on policies to improve standards. Over the years, we've been working with policy makers to bring standards into the industry. We've developed a curriculum and we are currently working on an industry profile and a code of practice. All this to bring standards that's in the industry help empower the industry and move it um, forward so if you're out there you want to train I mean go to a certified and accredited institution stakeholders also intend to put the spotlight on burden makeup artists improve industry standards and practices with a CV beauty initiative 
Participants will showcase their works at the Africa Makeup and Beauty Fair in Ghana, which will bring together the creme de la creme of Africa's makeup and beauty industry giants in an exhibition. Sensational Ghanaian musician and money hit maker says though he chose to do the street style of music, he's not a violent person as people perceive. He spoke to Miss G. Cutlass, what is with you and Cutlass? It's all for the arts. Like, no violence, no, uh, no for violence. It's mm -hmm. all for the arts. Mm -hmm. To the. Like, that's actually what the song, the, the feel he gave me. It's all for the arts. I'm not violent. I'm not in support of any violence. Man. It's all for the arts. What's with the choice of words that you mm. put in the song? I know you're representing the streets, yeah. but can't we make it any better to still project the streets? With the choice of words, yeah. It's all for the arts. That's why I said earlier. It's for the arts, bro. That's what people on the street love, man. Mm. Yeah. Because you, you can't lie about it. But... Yeah, it's all for the arts. And like, arts shouldn't be explained everywhere or something. Mm. You for deep on. Yeah, arts shouldn't be like, explained like so many times or what was. Yeah. So the that, that's why it's mm -hmm. art. Mm. Yeah. So the backlash is not going to change your style. It's not going to, no. you know, you're still if, going to see if, this black sheriff. Yeah, man. If that be what like the song is saying with the concept of, oh, we will do one. Yeah, it's all for the arts, no violences. With the machete that we did like this, it's actually a symbol. Aquafina, do you know Aquafina? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's what you told us in your statements. Now you're, you're beginning to tell us about the Aquafina, yeah. but in your statement, you didn't make a, a reference to any Idinkra symbol. Is there an afterthought? No, it actually wasn't an afterthought. Were but in, I didn't want to explain the arts in Were you in a haste to give us a response mm. to the backlash? No, no. Nah, I've never been in a haste, bro. Mm. Yeah, because I actually signed up for this, for the backlash and everything. I signed up for it, so I'm ever ready for everything. But I didn't want to explain the ads in the videos, because you'll continue to see a lot of things, like, the videos that mm. you ask questions about, but that's the ads. Black Sharif. Uh, this song is trending. In fact, it's in the top trends on YouTube. I hear over two million views I'm so far. It's, oh. it's a great guy. <laughs> a great guy. Okay. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for staying with us here on News 360. Join me and the rest of the team tomorrow morning on Sunrise on 3 FM 92.7 from 5 to 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I am Portia Gabo. Good evening.